First of all, I want to thank you very much for um, asking me to speak, Mary. Um, there's two reasons I'm speaking. One is on the 9th of March, we're having um, a day here. We've invited, the stewards have invited Graham Dow, who is ex-Bishop of Carlisle, to come and do a day's teaching on healing. And um, as part of healing, forgiveness can uh, be a massive, massively important part of our healing. We, we are so blessed in our world for having doctors and nurses and the good old NHS. Um, and so we, a lot of the time, our physical healing is sorted out for us, but our inner healing, the pain, the brokenness that we have in life requires something else. And as Mary, well, you mentioned about um, people saying we can fi fix our own heart. My own experience of life is no, it's the Lord that fixes my heart. And I know that there's quite a bit inside my heart at the moment that needs fixing. So the second reason I'm stood here is part of my per own personal journey that I want to, part of which I can share with you. Um, and also, interesting, the last week or so, I read somewhere, um, or somebody said in a Christian talk, that um, when we share our journey, it helps our healing. So that's why I'm very thankful to be able to do this tonight. And um, forgiveness. Where do I start? I've got all the notes here, all the bits and pieces here, and I want to talk a lot about what forgiveness is in the Bible and my experience of it. I could explain a lot of things that I need forgiveness for. I needed a lot of forgiveness when I first became a Christian, and that was a wonderful, wonderful experience, feeling that freedom of God forgiving me for actually not believing in, in him. There was a huge, huge weight off my shoulders that, oh, you really are who you are, say you are, Jesus, and thank you. And knowing the Holy Spirit, that was amazing. Then I had to forgive my, myself of the things that I'd done to other people. And that, in my Christian walk, was, was tricky. I, it, it's hard, actually. I think forgiving yourself is, is very difficult. And then about seven years or so ago, something happened... Um, not directly to me, but to people who have, I'm very, very close to. And because of that, I actually can't say what it is. It wouldn't be fair on them. All I can say, it was very, very painful. And actually, I was in such shock for quite a few months that I, forgiveness didn't even enter into my mind. But when I was able to, I knew as a Christian I had to forgive. Now, that was six and a half years ago. And it was... It's only now that I'm beginning to work through what it truly means to forgive other people who might have hurt people who I care very much about. Um, so I'm not... I think the reason I wanted to mention this at the beginning is I'm not saying that forgiveness is easy by any stretch of the imagination. It is not. It is a very painful process. And I think also we have to be very gentle on ourselves as we walk through forgiveness. Before this chapel was built, I remember being in a service. It was a Sunday at eight service in the old chapel. And Sarah Stewart shared about forgiveness um, and how it, how hurt her family had been through something that had happened to them. And she said it was a process. And so I've held on to that. And I also remember that night being very, very aware of the power of the Holy Spirit being present. So there's something very, very special about forgiveness, that the Lord has it on his heart, how important it is for us, and he's the one that helps us with it, and he's the one that heals when it hurts. So anyway, um, I can't remember what the first slide is, Paul, after this one. What did I, what did I put on? Was it the... Ah, that was it. Yeah. About, maybe about a month, six weeks ago... I came across this being preached on, and obviously we know this as well ourselves because we've preached through the book of James. But it was somebody preaching on this particular part. I'll just read it out loud. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and, after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom 
and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Now, when I first read this in the Bible, I was fixed on the do bit, that somehow it's a physical action of doing. When I heard this being preached about, I thought, it's not just about doing as in something physical. It's doing something inside us. And it was looking at the word. And I thought, that's what I've been doing for this last year or so. It started about April, May last year. I've been looking at the word about forgiveness. So I want to share this with you a little bit about how I, without realising, became very determined and deliberate in looking at what forgiveness was. That I actually gazed intently at the truth of this word. And I'm now going to really try and live it out, or I think the Lord is helping me live it out more powerfully. So anyway, it started with, I did something called the Daniel Fast. If you've heard of the Daniel Fast, it's when you give up quite a lot of food, but not everything. So that's always great because it means you can eat. <laughs> um, but you do, you do give up quite a lot. And so I did the Daniel Fast and started on embarking on looking at forgiveness. And this was the book. I've got a few books like this, and I just scribble lots of things down. And the thing with writing things down is you can go back and reflect, which is really powerful, and you can see how the Lord is actually prompting you and teaching you things as you go along. Well, that's how I found. So I went to the first mention, which is the next slide, Paul, please, which I believe is the Genesis one that we read out. Or well, when I looked in my concordance, that was the first time forgive came up. And it was Jacob asking Joseph to forgive his brothers. And I know from um, what Bible teachers have said, Joseph is a, an image of Christ, or he can be seen as an image of Christ. And it could be Christ um, talking to the Jewish people, the, the Israelites, um, as well. But here the father is asking the son to forgive. So that was my sort of starting point, and I thought that was quite powerful. The Hebrew for forgive on, in this passage, I believe, is called Nasa and or Nassar, which doesn't mean just to be forgiven, but to be honoured and lifted up. Now, if you're pr praying to forgive somebody else, you often don't feel it, that blessing your enemies bit, isn't it, that Jesus talks about? But anyway, let's just leave it at that for the time being. I'll come to that in a minute. The next mention of forgiveness, which is on the next slide, but a bit briefer, is in Leviticus. And in Leviticus, there is all the all the things that the priests had to do, all the sacrifices, which actually must have been quite, must have been a lot of blood when they did all those sacrifices because there was a lot of them. And I, I, I just took this particular passage from Leviticus, which is, in this way, the priest will make atonement for them for the sin they have committed and they will be forgiven. And there's lots of different animals that have to be, the blood has to be shed and sprinkled and done various things with, but the principle here is that forgiveness comes through the blood. And when um, I've been lucky enough to do a, a Bible study, actually on the blood, which sounds, again, a bit grim, but it's not, you realise that all of the things that the Israelites were doing when they were doing these sacrifices were in order to prepare us for what Jesus did when he was sacrificed and he was a sacrificial lamb. So could I have the next slide, please, Paul? Thank you. And in Hebrews, it said very clearly, in fact, the law, which is what, was talk, spoken about in Leviticus, requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is <coughs> no forgiveness. So for me, that took me all the way through to the fact that Jesus, what he did, that blood that he shed was forgiveness for me, for you, and for everything that's gone on and happened. And I think the next slide is Ephesians, which is where we started a few weeks ago. Um, I think it was David Perry who spoke for the first time in Ephesians, and he talked about our spiritual blessings in Christ. And here in Ephesians 1.7 it says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. Well, there we go. It's all the way through the Bible, culminating with Jesus, 
and it's an amazing thing to, that we can be part of those blessings of forgiveness. And then that brings us to something else. You see, forgiving yourselves is quite difficult. And th then having to forgive other people when sometimes the pain that's being caused is considerable. That is very, very difficult to do. And that's what I was being challenged to do. So it sort of went on hold for a bit. I don't know how far I got through with that bit. But it came back again when I started looking at healing. I was very lucky to go to LL last summer where they um, do lots of teaching and um, also a lot of ministry for healing. And um, this is the bit where I think I'm going to sit down. And the reason I'm going to sit down now, actually, if that's all right with you, thank you, is the fact that what I've talked about and what I was talking about was a lot, was in my head. So, you know, the head bit of forgiveness. Well, yeah, it makes sense. Jesus has done all of that. But you've got to actually forgive from your heart. And that was the bit that was more challenging. And I think I needed to go to LL because the experience I had of God there was really powerful. I knew that there was something blocking me with God, my, my, my relationship with him, and I, I wasn't quite sure what it was, but I knew it had a lot to do with unforgiveness, but also the hurts and all sorts of other things. And it manifested itself as this black gate that I knew I had to go through. And it, was, it opened a bit, this gate, and I could sort of go through it, but I kept coming back again. <laughs> anyway, cut a long story short, when I was there, I realised that the black gate, the reason why I didn't want to leave was I was in this dark place. Uh, and, but it was a safe place because I'd put myself there over the years. And, and so I didn't want to leave it because it was a bit, it, it was safe. But then I knew I had to go to, the, to, to, to God. And I had this, it is all in my head, by the way. But I had this experience while I was there of being released out of it and looking at myself from where God saw me and realising that he wanted to take me out of this dark place and take me into his loving arms. And the trust and the love that I experienced was wonderful. And I knew that God the Father was with me. And interestingly, I did actually have to forgive my dad a little bit. He, he's, he, was, he was a lovely man, my dad, a lovely man, but you know, we're all a bit imperfect. And, so there was a degree of forgiveness then, and it was seemed to be that that set me free to believe that I could totally trust my Father in heaven. And I think that was really, really important thing to know in my heart that. Um, I saw, when I became a Christian, I had a sort of feeling that, oops, oh dear, um, technology, sorry. <laughs> it seems to be working. Um, that Jesus was on my right side and there, and then this experience at LA was that the father was on this side as well and that he'd got hold of me there. And I actually think, now looking back, that was a very, very important thing to happen because I now can trust the father with the forgiveness that I need to do. Because we're not giving our pain and hurt to anybody. We're giving our pain and hurt to the father of all of us the father of creation who's made everything and we can totally trust him. Now I'm saying this wonderfully confident because I can feel the spirit here. We've praised God and it's wonderful but obviously we go out, we leave and we still feel scared and we still can often feel that unforgiveness again. And I honestly hadn't got to this point of understanding how important that was. But I wanted to speak and say that before we look at the next passage, which is, Paul, could I have the next slide, please? Oh, yes, I did miss, yes. This was the one, because the New Testament is so clear that we have to forgive. We say in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And then in Matthew, just shortly after Jesus has taught the disciples how to to say the Lord's Prayer, says, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. 
But if you do not forgive them their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. And that's really salutary. We have to. This is this isn't this isn't a this isn't something we can just perhaps get by with. This is something we have to do. Um, and that's why we have to know how loving our Father is. And also Paul goes on to continue that in Ephesians 4, where he says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. I think actually Jesus takes it to another level. So if you could look at the next slide, please, Paul, with the unmerciful servant. Because in the unmerciful servant, I think probably most of us know the story that the king forgives the servant who owes him a lot of money, and then the servant goes out and gets hold. I, I quite like that cartoon because it was like throttling him, you know, to, the, to somebody else who owes him something. Oh, you know, give me the money, give me, give me it. Um, and that's what I've actually felt like. I have felt like that about what I needed to forgive, and I won't make any bones about it. The Lord knows I do that. He's treated me kindly and gently until I felt ready. Sorry, can we go on to the next one, Paul? Thank you. Because actually, Jesus is very specific about it. He says, then the master called the servant in, you wicked servant. He said, I cancelled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have mercy, mercy, which is a really key word, on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured. Oh, my goodness me, that makes me feel sick, does torture until he should pay him back all he owed. And this is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. And it's a really strong message that Jesus is giving there, isn't it? Really, really strong. But I think if we understand how gracious and how wonderful the father is, then it's not almost a matter of duty we actually want to do it because we love him. So all of this is mixed up with love. And this is what Jesus showed on the cross because this is, um, if you can look at the next slide, Paul. This is what he, this is what I felt was being said to me, actually before, you know, before what I said, what Jesus said. Forgiveness has to move from the head to the heart. So for me standing up there and talking about it with my head, I'm sitting down and talking about it with the heart. And that's where mercy comes in. Because God has shown me mercy. He's shown me mercy. And I've done some pretty, pretty really bad, quite bad things, actually, um, that really do require God's mercy. So, therefore, if I found in, as I walk through my Christian life, that people have also done bad things... I'm in the same position as them, and I need to show mercy. And I think the fact that this, this relationship or this feeling of knowing how much God loves me has enabled me to take that next step. Because when I was, um, it was probably about after I'd come back from LL, and I think God was bringing up this, this need for the, the forgiveness, somebody said to me, can you trust God with what needs forgiving? And I said, yes. And they said, do you know that passage? Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I don't know, did I put that on next? Yes, I did. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. And on the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And actually, I think what I've realised was that actually the unforgiveness in me, when I, t when I lift it up and say, Lord, I need to do something with this. Not only is it wrong because you've said it in your word, I need to trust you with it. I can actually let it go to him. And as a, one of the things about forgiveness, um, one of the words in Greek that was used, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this right, 
Harizimo um, me. Oh, well, anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it means that you're handing over the custody. You're handing over that forgiveness. And I think there was something really important about that. It's like casting your cares on the Lord, casting him, casting it to him. And as I've done all of that, it's becoming more of a heart realisation that actually I want to start praying for these people who I need to forgive as well and blessing them and heaping coals because there is something in that we don't understand but the Lord does. Maybe a spiritual, um, something's broken in the spiritual realm. I know Mary, you sort of touched on that a few weeks ago, didn't you? And immediately after that, somebody else was speaking on that when we do these acts, there's something happens up there. And so I do want to forgive from my heart. That's why I'm sat on the seat on the seat. And finally, I think it's the last the last one, Paul. Jesus said, and it was this that really spoke to me, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And Jesus said that on the cross as they were crucifying him. And I thought, I didn't know what I was doing when I needed God's forgiveness. These situations in our lives where people have hurt us, they, they don't know what they're doing either. And if Jesus can do it, then if I'm going to walk with him and be doer of his word, that's what I want to do. So there, that's what I've ended up with. <coughs> and thank you for listening. I just want to add a few little last bits. That, that the goal for me is to get rid of all the bitterness. And so I've, on the little bit of paper that Mary gave us, make sure I don't drop this again, um, I've written, well, I've actually drawn pictures, and I'm going to put it on here and keep working on it, because forgiveness, I think, is a mindset that we need to keep doing. So, if any, in the next song, if any of you um, feel there's anything you need to let go of and trust God with and forgiveness, Stick it on there. But Mary's also put some messages of blessing, haven't you, Mary? About forgiveness. So that we can actually take something back from that. And we know that it is one of our spiritual blessings in Christ in Ephesians. And also, this is, sorry, this is the very last bit of the Bible. I scribbled it down just before I came. It's from John 14. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. And again, they will do the works. And I always had it of doing being something physical we do, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's the forgiveness that we can show of the greater works. Thank you.